Hello, I'm Jashikins, and I'm finally back at my house for around a week. I was at Rep. Reznor's house. We had fun. We shot some footage for a view of most of season three of The Walking Dead and a review of the 2004 movie Eternal Sunshine, The Spotless Mind, and... I don't know when those will be edited, as that's all up to Rev Reznor, as he's really the technical genius, and we're sort of on the ways of getting him into having his own YouTube channel, so he can actually do crazy shit on his own, and people will recognize his awesomeness. Anyways... This video will be about The Walking Dead Season 3 finale called Welcome to the Tombs. Now let's start off with something bad. This whole season has been leading up to a big showdown between the governor and Rick, a showdown between Woodbury and the prison. Which side will win? Which side will lose? Who will kill the governor? And that's really the downfall of this episode, that we never really get a big showdown. Yes, we do get a nice battle scene between Woodbury and the prison, but it's not really as epic as, you know, was expected. <laughs> but there were some good character deaths, and I'm sort of sad about one of them. I'll talk about the first character death first, so I can talk about my ship getting split in two. Anyways, the first one to die is Milton, and Milton at the beginning of the episode is being beaten by the governor, and the governor kills Milton while stabs him, bleeding stabs him so Milton can slowly die from the chest wound and then turn into a zombie. And Milton does, and he ends up fighting Andrea, who, <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people don't like Andrea at all, and are like, yay, she's dead, and... Well, she doesn't die from the bite wound, but, you know, Michonne and... Some of the prison gang come, and Andrea ends up killing herself. But I'm sad about her death, and I because I like the character. True, during some of season three, I didn't really like her just because the whole governor Andrea storyline didn't really fit me. Because at first, it sort of worked because you know she's been wandering the zombie apocalypse and she's found this town that's all perfect and she's found this really hot guy she wants to spank and the governor is crazy is not to be trusted but he's so I can understand that but it just went on for too fucking long that's like Andrea you've made some dumb mistakes but this is not your level of dumb it's sort of why in Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, I could never ship Derek and Jesse, even though they were a, can a canonical ship, because to make that pairing work, Derek had to be dumbed down so fucking much, and it was just an insult to his character, and fuck, that's a whole rant for a different day, and I will be reviewing Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, so... Anyways, back to The Walking Dead. I was sad to see her die. And then her final death scene where Michonne stays in the room with her. That loving glance and Rev Reznor doesn't ship them and doesn't see anything between them. But in that glance, I was like, there's something more than friendship in that one gaze. It's... Michonne has finally gone back with her lover and she's sad and 
just the glances between the two, to me, were, like, more than a sex scene. Uh, but I wish that they would have kissed on screen just so people would know that, hey, they are a couple. They loved each other. Because now that a Machandria Sh- shippers are forced to do are to say, well, there was this and that, and that. There was this one kissing scene at the end. But I think someone's headcanon that I've read, I believe, on Tumblr, that she, that the person thinks that Michonne and Andrea kissed before Andrea killed herself, you know, to make sure she didn't turn into a zombie. And the whole scene played out with Michonne, Andrea, the doors are shutting, Rick and the others sort of sticking outside, and then all you hear is the gunshot. I'm going to sign on to that headcanon. I... I'm sorry for stealing your headcanon, Tumblr user, but I have to take it. I fucking have to. The governor just upped his level of insaneness and evilness. Now, throughout this season, you've seen him grow slowly more insane. I mean... To start off with, he was evil, he was conniving, he was scheming, but he had restraint. And now those are all gone. He told Milton that, you know, when Milton asked, what would your daughters think of you? The governor replied that, hey, if I was like I am now with no restraint, she would still be alive today. She would think I was a monster. She wouldn't like me, but she would be alive. And that sort of shows a sort of deepness to the governor's character because he's like, I am evil. I admit that. But I'm but this is the way to survive in the world. And I think he, the regret he feels for his daughter is eating up at him, so he's turning into this monster because he has nothing, for one, he has nothing to hold him back, and two, he thinks it's the only way to survive. And he's going to be alive in season four. And I like seeing more of him just to see because we finally get a glimpse of his real evil nature, the beast inside. However, all, all of season three was leading up to a big climactic battle and him dying. That didn't happen. That's the only reason I'm disappointed. And there was a... This week on The Talking Dead, the show that follows The Walking Dead and is hosted by Chris Hardwick and talks about behind the scenes stuff, talks has people discussing. This week also had someone calling in about apocalyptic prophecy. But anyways, the poll on this week's The Talking Dead was whether Carl should have shot the ki- the teenager or not. And it was evenly divided. It was 50-50. You know, he should have or shouldn't have. Personally, I was getting bad vibes. Because it's like the... And other people on IMDb have pointed out that, you know, sort of confirmed my feelings about how the one teenager could have gotten Carl close enough, made so that You know, Herschel wouldn't be able to shoot back. So I admit it was horrible, but it was the right thing to do. However, however, Carl sort of revealed how he wasn't really understanding everything. Because remember, he's like me, 13 or 14. He's listen, teenagers that are watching this, I do not mean to insult you with this, but when you're a teenager, your, your brain is still evol- is still growing, is, you know, not fully developed. And so, you know, 
I was going to say Clark for some fucked up reason, but Carl, you know, his brain hasn't fully developed, and plus he's in this post-apocalyptic world populated by zombies. I mean, walkers, whatever. And, you know, he's going to have a hard time growing up anyways, and all he's seen is all these people dying because other people didn't kill certain people. And so he figured that was the same reason why he should have. And he was blaming Rick for not killing the governor. As someone pointed out on IMDb, he, Rick could have killed the governor. But the thing was, the governor brought backup, and the backup was loyal to the governor. It's not like the governor's saying, like, oh, we're going to follow you. So Carl has the right intentions, but he doesn't really understand it. He's just, I'm going to kill people because that's the way to survive. And he even drops the sheriff's badge, which sort of, to me, signifies he's total he's going to lose it he's i think in season four he's going to be a very loose cannon very very loose and while he's now a badass he's too unstable for me to get behind but big move up from season one and before i finish this i will say that people on a some of the IMDb boards are complaining that season three was bad because it doesn't have enough scenery change as season one and season two. However, the whole not going anywhere was really prevalent in season two. So it's like, okay, now season two doesn't have the same problem season three has, even though, fuck it all. In short, The Walking Dead, Welcome to the Tombs, good finale. It has it didn't have the thing I wanted, which disappointed me, but it still was full of sadness, of feels. It was big. It was epic. And it made you, of course, want to tune in for the next episode, which we're, we're going to have to wait for a while. For some fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. This Walking Dead, Welcome to the Tombs. I will have a review out of The Walking Dead Season 3. It will be a written review, therefore it will be on my blog, not on YouTube. So, check that out. I might have that, I believe, out within the week. <laughs> and if you notice my ring, uh, I'm having my engagement ring clean because it's white gold and there needs rhodium or yeah, whatever, but the point is, Brian's lay, Rev Reznor is allowing me to wear my uh, wedding ring be, because, you know, the engagement ring's going away, and he bought both, both rings at once, so yay. Anyways, I have been Jashikins, owner at jashikins.blogspot.com. If you want to contact me for whatever reason, you can do so at facebook.com slash Jashikins fan page, on Twitter at Jashikins, or on Tumblr at Jashikins.tumblr.com. I'm really original here. <laughs> and if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, yada, yada, yada. If you're viewing this on my blog. Thank you just for watching. Share amongst your friends. Comment below. Yeah, and um, this was a good April Fool's Day. On um, Tumblr, it was Misha Cop Mish Opalypse or something, <laughs> which I participated in. I'm very sorry for the people on Tumblr who were just bombarded with my Misha shit. <laughs> And until next video, goodbye.